Hey guys, welcome back to How to Neil Gavin. Today I'm doing like a, a video I'm sure lots of people have done, but I haven't really seen them do it, so maybe it hasn't been done, I don't know. But I decided I really wanted to do an A to Z of middle grade, and what I mean by that is that I wanted to try and pick a recommendation for each letter of the alphabet. That is what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, the biggest challenge for me personally is actually picking just one book per letter. So I was gonna do a three recommendations per letter, plus one book off my TBR for that letter as well. And then I realized 26 times four is um, a really long video. So I thought I may as well just like, the real challenge is getting it down to just one recommendation per letter. And I wasn't even gonna do the TBR thing either, but I was inspired by Lexi from Alexandra Rosen. She just put up a middle grade TBR video, which I will link in the description box below. It's fantastic. So I'm gonna do it by letter A, B, C, D and then tell you one book I recommend from that letter, and then one book on my TBR in that letter. So that is the gist. I spent so much time trying to explain that. Wow. Now the rules. <laughs> what rules? I'm not counting the as a T. So if it was something like the something, I would count it as an S for something rather than the T for the if you know what I mean, a something, I'm also going to put it under S instead of A as well. That gives me a lot more breathing room, I'll have you know. So before I get into it, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so that you can find out when I'm uploading new videos, which is semi-regular. <laughs> and also I have all of my social media links in the description box too. So I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, I have already picked up all the books. So I'm not going to pretend like, oh, what? What have I got that's got A in the title? You know, I'm not going to do that. It's hard to do a video like this and not shout out some of my all-time favourites in it. So I'm sorry about that. So A is for Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston, of course. <laughs> Of course, I was going to bring this one out. I don't want this video to be really long either, so I'm going to give you very brief summaries on each of the books. So, Amari the Night Brothers, it follows a young girl whose brother has gone missing. She finds a suitcase with an invitation to the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs, where she goes to try and find her brother, but also it's a place where people learn to become junior agents and find out more about the supernatural world. It is also for Arusha and the City of Gold by Roshni Chokshi, and this one comes out very, very soon, and I'm so excited. I love the Arusha series so much. It follows a young girl called Aru and she accidentally unleashes a demon in the very first book and she has to go on these adventures to fix her mistake. It features a lot of Hindu mythology. It's part of the Rick Ryden Presents line so it's just an all-around fantastic series. B is for Brightstorm by Bashti Hardy. This one follows twins Arthur and Morty and they have news that their explorer father has died on an expedition to South Polaris. Now the twins get this mysterious clue and they end up going on an adventure to find out what really went on. B is also for Beyond Platform 13 by Chevelle Pounder and Eva Botson. And I haven't read The Secret of Platform 13 yet either, but I mean, it wouldn't fit in this part. But this one is set on the island of Mist and Prince Ben and Odge are trying to find out what's going on and they end up meeting a nine-year-old girl called Lena who is seeking an adventure. <laughs> C is for Castle of Tangled Magic by Sophie Anderson. This one follows Olia and she lives in Castle Mila and there is a storm... <laughs> Bit my tongue. There is a storm that is threatening Castle Mila and her family, so Olia ends up going on this incredible adventure to a land where this mysterious wizard is wreaking havoc and ends up trying to find a way to save her home. Say so is also for City Spies by James Ponty. This one has been recommended to me so much lately, and it's really hard to ignore actually because I actually love the premise of this. It does follow a young girl called Sarah and she is a hacker. She ends up going to juvenile detention, but she is released by MI6 agents. She joins other young MI6 agents and travels around the world. And in this one, I believe she has to do some hacking in Paris. D is for Darwin's Dragons by Lindsay Galvin. This one follows a young cabin boy called Sims on an expedition with the one and only Charles Darwin. Sims falls overboard and ends up washing on a Galapagos island where he discovers some magical things on that island. D is also for The Dollmaker of Krakow by R.M. Romero. This is set in 1939 and it's during the Nazi occupation. There is a dollmaker that makes a doll called Carolina and magic ends up bringing Carolina to life. E is for Eye of the North by Sinead O'Hart and this one follows Emmeline and her her parents go missing and she ends up going on this ship to France where she meets Thing who is this young boy and there is this villainous doctor who has tried to take her to the frozen north to release a monster. It is also for The Extremely Inconvenient Adventures of Bronte Metalstone by Jacqueline Moriarty. This one follows a young girl whose parents have died and they leave her instructions 
to give 10 gifts to 10 different ants, otherwise something really bad is going to happen. F is for Frostheart by Jamie Littler, yay! This one is set on the Snow Sea and there are strongholds to divide everyone up. Ash lives in the Fire stronghold and he has these incredible powers where he is able to communicate with the monsters that live in the Snow Sea. However, that is a bad power according to everyone. So he is a banished and he ends up joining the crew of the Frostheart on this incredible adventure to find his missing parents. I mean, I didn't scratch the surface with that one, did I? F is also for Frost Hollow Hall by Emma Carroll. This one is set in 1881, follows a young girl called Tilly and when she's out ice skating, she falls through the ice but she is saved by a ghost. I have no idea what else happens in this one, to be honest. G is for The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. This one is set in a place where a witch ends up saving the abandoned children that the village leaves out for her. One day she saves a young baby and accidentally feeds her moonlight instead of starlight, giving this young girl extraordinary powers. And this is kind of her story of her growing up. G is also for A Glass House of Stars by Shirley Ma. I am so excited to read this one. I've heard such fantastic praise for this one. It's told in second person. I'm finding it hard to explain this one because it's just apparently told in such beautiful metaphors and a touch of magic. But this follows Mixing Lim who immigrates with her family to this new house in New Land, I think it's called. And Mixing calls the house Big Scary. And after tragedy strikes, Mixing finds the walls of Big Scary to close in around her. And I think it's just like a really powerful beautifully told metaphor of a book. Um, so it's really hard to explain, but it just sounds phenomenal. So I cannot wait to read it. H is for The Hatmakers by Tamsin Merchant. This one follows Cordelia Hatmaker, who is part of the Hatmakers. And there are different makers that live in this kind of Edwardian London. Now the Hatmakers, they make hats that have magical properties and they can make the wearer do different things. And they have to make a peace hat for the princess who is in talks with France to avoid war. Now the peace clothes do end up going missing. So Cordelia has to find out what has happened she also has to find out what happened to her father, who at the start of the story is part of a shipwreck. So it's... And that's what I'm saying about it. H is also for Harklights by Tim Tilly. This one comes out relatively soon, but it does follow a young boy called Wick who lives in this match factory. It's a really horrible, dark match factory. And one day a bird drops a baby in an acorn cradle to him. And then he ends up getting visited by the protectors of the forest who, in turn for his kindness, ends up giving him a chance to escape. I I, I don't like living under your spotlight. I is for The Infinite Lives of Maisie Day by Christopher Edge. This one follows Maisie who one day wakes up and it's her 10th birthday. Things are going as normal and then she wakes up again and the house is empty. There is just nothing but blackness outside. And then she wakes up again and it's her 10th birthday. There's a lot going on here. <laughs> it's really hard to explain. I read it a little while ago. But she's kind of trying to figure out what's going on as the darkness is starting to close in on her. So... Yeah. I is also for The Incorrigible Children of Ashen Place, The Mysterious Howling by May Rose Wood. This one, there are these children who had grown up in the wild and they come to this academy where this governess called Penelope ends up taking them on. I think it's a new position for her, so everything is rather new and different for her. So it sounds really exciting. Don't know what it's about other than that. <laughs> J is for The Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste and this one follows Corinne. She lives on this really small island where Caribbean folktales are real, so we are introduced to the Jumbies that live in the woods. J is also for Julia and the Shark by Kirima Wood Hargrave with Tom DeFreston. And this one, all I know about it is that it follows a mother, a daughter and a Greenland shark. It's Kirima Wood Hargrave, so what more do you need to know? K is for Kiki's Delivery Service by Eiko Cadorno with illustrations by Joe Todd Stanton. If you've seen the Studio Ghibli film, you'll know exactly what this is. But this one follows Kiki and she is a young witch looking for a new town to settle in. She travels with her black cat Gigi and the town she ends up finding, she starts doing delivery services for them. It's just a really cozy magical adventure. It's pretty much exactly like the movie. K is also for King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. And this one follows King whose brother Khalid died and King thinks that his brother has come back as a dragonfly. His best friend Sandy ends up going missing and King ends up having to confront questions about himself, his sexuality, as as well as the reality of his brother's death. 
L is for The Lion Tender by Kate Allen. This one follows a young girl whose mother had died when she was seven. Now that she's more grown up, this is kind of a coming of age story where she ends up having to confront grief as well as her own body and her changes and all of that stuff. <laughs> L is also for Last Game of Santa by Katie Zhao. I'm so excited about this book. This one follows Rena Cheng and she is an amateur gamer and she wants to compete in these gaming battles, I believe. But she ends up getting blackmailed and threatened to be doxxed, which leads her having to deal with a very toxic gaming community. The colour balance is going to be all over the place in this video, I'm so sorry. M is for The Monsters of Rookhaven by Padre Kenny and illustrated by Edward Betterson. This one is a very gothic kind of monstery book, almost Adam's Family-esque. A family of monsters living in this house that is protected from the outside world. Two people from the outside world end up coming through with a barrier into their world. If you have arachnophobia, look away in three, two, one. It has illustrations like this and it honestly makes you jump. <laughs> <laughs> M is also for The Mighty Heart of Sunny St. James by Ashley Herring Blake. This one follows Sunny who has a heart transplant I believe and she ends up making a list of things that she wants to do now that she has a new heart including to kiss a boy but then she makes best friends with Quinn and then Sunny ends up questioning whether she wants to kiss a boy at all so yeah. N is for Nevermore The Trials of Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. I obviously had to choose this one didn't I? This one follows Morrigan Crow who is a cursed child and she is about to die on her birthday but then this mysterious stranger called Jupiter North whisks her away to the land of Nevermore where she has to prove herself as being sort of magical in this magical society called the Wondrous Society. It's just a really magical book okay? N is also for The Nowhere Emporium by Ross Mackenzie. This one is about a emporium that shows up out of nowhere and it ends up popping up in Glasgow where a young boy called Daniel ends up stumbling across it. It is filled with like labyrinthian wonders inside it and the owner ends up recruiting Daniel as an apprentice I believe. Sounds good. O is for Orion Lost by Alistair Chisholm. This one is on a spaceship called the Orion where lots of humans are on board. Whenever they have to do a, a, a jump, everyone has to be put to sleep. However, an event happens that causes all of the adults and most of the children to stay asleep and a select few children end up waking up and they have to control this spaceship in the middle of space where there are potentially things out there. It's really good. O is also for Oddly Coulter and the Narrowway Hunt by Rhiannon Williams. Williams. This follows Otley whose brother ends up disappearing and she goes on this adventure to find him. She ends up coming across an organisation that is kidnapping boys. Otley must then rescue her brother from the Narrowway Hunt. The title. <laughs> hey is for A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. This one follows three young sisters called the Widdishans and they each have a magical item that has been handed down through the generations of Widdishans women. This is set on Crossbone Island and there is this curse where if they leave the island they will die by the next sunset. However the curse is triggered and the three sisters have to try and find a way to prevent themselves from dying. <laughs> hey is also for Proud of Me by Sarah Hager Holt. This one follows Becky and Josh and they both have two mums and the same donor dad. Josh wants to find out who his donor dad is when he comes of age and Becky thinks that she might have feelings for her best friend Carly. Q is for Quintessence by Jess Redman. This one follows a young girl called Alma who moves to the town of Four Points. One night she sees a star fun from the sky and in order to return the star home she must join together with some new friends in order to create Quintessence and send her back. Q is also for The Queen's Nose by Dick K. Smith. I actually really struggled with this one. If the Queen Queen's Nose is anything like the TV show when I was growing up. It meant that you can make a wish on a 50 pence piece if you rub the Queen's Nose on it. That was a TV show. I'm not too sure about the book. However, I needed a cue and that was one of the only ones I could find. <laughs> R is for Root Magic by Eden Royce. This one follows twins Jez and Jay in 1963 in South Carolina and their uncle called Doc ends up teaching them Root Magic. R is also for Ramesa, a fairy tale by Radia Hafiza and this one is about a girl who is locked away in a tower and in order to escape she lets her high jump down and she ends up going on this incredible adventure. I believe this retells Ramesa, Cinderella and Stephen Sarah so it just sounds awesome. S is for Show Us Who You Are by Elle McNichol. This one is set in the kind of near future where pomegranate industries can make holograms of people whether they be dead or alive. And we follow Cora who is autistic. She ends up meeting Adrian and they become really good friends. Cora is all for pomegranate whereas Adrian has some very real reservations about pomegranate. So Cora ends up trying to 
solve the mysteries and the complexities of pomegranate and the people who work there. S is also for the shark caller by Zilla Bethel. This one is set on an island that Blue Wing lives on and she wants to be a shark caller. There is a newcomer called Maple who comes along and they end up having to go to the bottom of the ocean to find the deadliest shark of all. T is for Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James. This is the first book in the Pages and Core series. This follows Tilly who is a book wanderer. She can go into stories and stories can come out so she can pull characters out like Alice or Anne of Green Gables. Tilly's mother has been missing for quite some time and she hopes to use her book wandering abilities to solve that mystery. T is also for Tamarind and the Star of Ishtar by Jasmine de Balan. This one follows Tamarind who goes to this huge house in the Himalayas to find out some of her family history because her Indian mum died before she was even born. Cameron follows some clues to an overgrown hut, a star-shaped ring, as well as a girl called Ishta. U is for The Umbrella Mouse by Anna Farga and illustrated by Sam Usher. This one follows Pip who lives with her parents during World War II and Pip is a mouse. Pip's home ends up getting bombed and she has to leave home with just an umbrella. Pip ends up coming across some animals who are part of the resistance during World War II. And U is also for the sequel The Umbrella Mouse to the Rescue by Anna Farga illustrated by Sam Usher. So this one does follow on from it. I believe it's set in France because there is Notre Dame and the Eiffel Tower and I've been meaning to read this for such a long time. Such a long time. B is for Voyage of the Lost and Found by Aisha Bushby. And this one is the first book in the Moonchild series, also illustrated by Rachel Dean. This one follows Amira who lives on the sea with her sea witch mothers. However, this storm means that she ends up having to dock for the first time ever on land and her gin ends up getting kidnapped by a firebird leads to a great, great, great adventure and I cannot wait for the sequel. V is also for Voyage of the Sparrow Hope by Natasha Farrand. This book is set in the first spring after the Great War and it's set in a small village called Barton and everything's turning back to normal except for two of the kids. So Lottie is running away with a stolen chihuahua and Ben and his dog are living alone. However, they end up coming together. They end up getting on a boat called the Sparrow Hope and there are police chasers. There are storms at sea, unexpected puppies, things like that. It just sounds so wonderful. So yeah, this is on my TBL. W is for Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn, of course, one of my favourites. This one follows Minley who lives in the Valley of the Fruitless Mountain and her parents have always told her stories about the Man of the Moon and the Jade Dragon. Her family are quite poor so Minley ends up leaving home in the hopes that the Man of the Moon will be able to reverse her fortune. And she goes on this incredible adventure, she meets a dragon who can't fly as well as a tiger, a king, so much goes on in this novel. W is also for The Weather Weaver by Tamsin Mori. This one follows Stella who I think she goes to live with her grandfather in the Shetlands and she ends up befriending a cloud and she starts to learn weather magic as well. So that's all I really know about it because it doesn't really say what it's about on the back but it just sounds amazing. I can't wait. Okay so for X, Y and Z I actually had nothing for them. I had nothing on my shelves that could really fit these so I all of these will be now TBR things so I put out a tweet on Twitter asking if anyone had any suggestions for these. So Caroline Murphy said what about Boy X by Dan Smith. Now obviously there is a little bit of a cheat because you know boy is B and yeah but the X is important. So <laughs> so X is going to be for Boy X by Dan Smith. Boy X follows Ash who has been kidnapped and he wakes up on a tropical island. His mother is a genetic scientist and she has been imprisoned and infected with a deadly disease. Now Ash must go through this jungle in order to help and save his mother. Sounds really good. So that is on my X TBR. I have nothing I've read that begins with X so I can't recommend that. Y is going to be for You Go First by Erin and Trotter Kelly. This was recommended on Twitter to me by Nicole. This one follows Charlotte and Ben and they become online friends through Scrabble. They both have so much in common, they both get bullied, they both sit alone and they both have family problems so they both kind of help each other to navigate that. Sounds really good so I'm glad I've got that one now. Z is for Zora and Me by Victoria Bond and T.R. Simon. That one was also recommended to me by Nicole on Twitter so thank you so much. This one follows a young girl called Zora and she is a great storyteller. She makes up a story about a gator man who can come through the marshes and steal human souls. When a man is found murdered, Zora's tales take on a whole different new meaning. So I really did end up struggling towards the end there with X, Y and Z. We need more middle grade books published with those letters in the front, at the very front. I need more. So that was my A to Z kind of little challenge for middle grade. If you want to take part in that, 
feel free. It's not really a tag kind of thing, I just wanted to give recommendations and tell you more of my TBR for middle grade. But if you have any suggestions, if you have your own A to Z recommendations, list them down below, I'd love to see it. And if you would change any of them too, let me know. There's so much more that I would have said during this video. Honestly, I would have so many recommendations for each letter. It would be the longest video of your life. So I did try my best to narrow it down. And I feel awful for leaving out some more of my favourites, but it had to be done. I'm sorry. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.